another video. This is the first video of a new playlist which will focus on the topic of derivatives for single variable functions. A calc one topic. And now that we have gone through our conversations about limits and continuity, we are able to do what we are going to venture into in this playlist. So this first video in this playlist is going to focus on the topic of revisiting the tangent line. Let's go ahead and start taking a look. Okay, now recall first of all, what's up with a tangent line? We had said this in a prior video, but it's been a while. A tangent line to a function, call it f of x, at some particular point, say a comma f of a, is this line which just touches or grazes the graph at the of the function at this point. Right? So it just barely touches the graph. So just to see a graph as an example right here, the blue graph, the parabolic looking graph f of x, we can see we have this point right here, a comma f of a, and the red line that we see there is the tangent line uh, for that function at that ordered pair. As you can see, it just touches the graph, grazes it. What it does after that, you know, it does after that. But all we care about is at that particular point of tangency, it's just barely touching the graph. So we're going to focus on trying to find a slope of these tangent lines. So, what's up with the tangent lines and how do they relate to what is called a rate of change? Let's consider again, we got a function, f of x. And let's let this point p here be this point, a comma f of a. And let's let the point q be the point x comma f of x. So in this setup, what we're thinking of is this point right here, point p. That is a fixed point. So that's the point that we're going to be interested in finding the tangent line at. And this other point q, since the input value of f is x, Kind of think of this as just any arbitrary point on the graph. Arbitrary. Okay, so it can move around. It could be anywhere, whereas the point P is always at that location, A comma F of A. Then, first of all, we're going to need this idea, the slope of the secant line, to talk about the slope of a tangent line. Recall that the slope of a secant line through those two points, P and Q, Let's call it right down here, m sub p of q, because we usually use m as a slope of a line. Slope of the secant line through the points, p and q that we just described above, would just be this quantity right here, which is f of x minus f of a, divided by x minus a. And of course, that is just the same thing as the change in the output between the two points, divided by the change in the input of the two points, the slope. And remember, what that gives us conceptually is it tells us the average rate of change of the function over the interval a to x here. That's a typo, sorry about that. a to x, because that's the interval we're on. So, as a graph, you can recall this picture right here. Right, that's exactly what's going on. We got the point P right there a comma f of a, you got the point q right there, x comma f of x, and then the line, that red line, which I've kind of drawn as a line segment, but of course it can just keep going on forever in both directions. That line is our secant line between the points p and q on the graph of f of x, and every line has a slope, right? So this line has slope, f of x minus f of a, divided by x minus a, right? So slope of this secant line connecting points p and q is just, as we can see, f of x minus f of a, the change in the output direction, over x minus a, the change in the input direction. And it gives us, on average, how much the function has gone up or down by over this interval from a to x. So that's just a refresher because we're going to need that to find the slope of the tangent line as we're going to see. It's going to tell us this conclusion right here and we're going to look at a dynamic 
type of graph here in a moment, that the slope of the tangent line to the function at that one location x is equal to a is this right here. Let's call it m sub tan for slope of the tangent line at that location. Eventually we'll have an alternative notation for that, but that's not until another video from now. And what is it? Well, as we can see right there, that is the slope of our secant line through the points P and Q. And remember the coordinates of Q was X comma F of X. So now if we let that value of X approach the location of A, which is where the location of A comma F of A is that point P on the graph, then as we're going to see, the slopes of the secant lines approach the slope of the tangent line. So let's take a look at a picture here to help us visualize such a thing. Okay, so let me just scroll up real quick right here and get this here. All right, so as we can see in the picture here, right, we have this diagram given to us and it is the graph, this blue graph here, the function y is f of x. Here's our point p at a comma f of a. Here's our point q at x comma f of x. The green line here, that's our secant line through the points p and q. And of course, it has slope, just this difference quotient right here without the limit. The red line is our tangent line at the point p. And what we, want, what we want to demonstrate is this limit idea of the slope of the secant line. So slope of the secant line, f of x minus f of a over x minus a. But now I'm going to let x get closer and closer to a. So when I do that, x is getting closer and closer to a. Well, what happens? That slope of the secant line is going to approach the slope of the tangent line. And what I just did right there, right? That is as x approaches a from the right. But of course, x could also be on the left of a. So we also want x approaching a from the left. And we see that indeed, in both directions, this slope of the secant line approaches the slope of the tangent line. And hence why we have this limit statement right above that defines the slope of the tangent line at the location a comma f of a course, assuming this limit exists. So that diagram is supposed to help us visualize what this limit idea is. And it is as exactly what we just said. As x approaches a from both directions, the slope of the secant line through the points p and q approaches the slope of the tangent line at the location of p. So now that we have that slope, we can go ahead and find the equation of a tangent line at this location as well, right? So what is the general equation of the tangent line to f of x at the location x is equal to a? Well, in order to find the equation of a tangent line, what do you need? You need a point on the line and you also need the slope. We know that the point a comma f of a is a point on the tangent line because that's the point that's common with the function and the line itself, where we are tangent to the function. And now we have established the slope is this right here. And so now we got a point on the line and we got slope of the line, that tangent line. Thus, if we use the point slope formula to find the equation of the tangent line to f of x at x is equal to a, we can write like so here on the left, y minus the output value f of a is equal to the slope, in this case, m sub tan, if you will, times x minus a. Or if you just replace the formula for m sub tan with the corresponding definition of its slope, we can write it as so here on the right, y minus f of a is equal to that limit as x goes to a of f of x minus f of a divided by x minus a times x minus a. So if we are going to have to find one of these equations for a particular function, we would of course need to find that limit. And indeed we are going to do an example of this here in a moment. So here's just a picture again, generalizing it all. You got a function, the blue graph, 
tangent location a comma f of a you can see the red line is the tangent line at a comma f of a and of course it has this slope right here like we've just established and if I simply go back to this equation say right there and add f of a on both sides I can put it into slope intercept form giving us this formula is always the formula for the equation of a tangent line at a comma f of a so we're going to do an example now and what we're going to do is this right down here we're going to use the limit definition of the tangent line slope to find the following in part a here to find the slope of the tangent line to this particular function f of x is equal to 4 divided by x squared at the location of x is negative 1 and then once we do that we can go ahead and actually find the equation of the tangent line to f of x at x is equal to negative 1. So let's first do part a. How are we going to find the slope of the tangent line to this function f of x which is equal to 4 divided by x squared? Well remember let's just write it down again. The slope of the tangent line at this location is going to be the limit as x goes to a of f of x minus f of a divided by x minus a right now we got our formula 4 divided by x squared and then notice that right here we're finding the slope at x is negative 1 so that's really just our a value in the formula right a is equal to negative 1 here so let's go ahead and rewrite this limit in terms of what we have this is going to be the limit x goes to a of okay f of x is 4 divided by x squared and then notice that f of a well what is it f of negative 1 <clears throat> is 4 over negative 1 squared which is 4 over 1 which is 4 so our f of a here is 4 hence minus 4 in the numerator all divided by x minus a minus 1 now notice as x approaches a here, and really we should write the a here now also as negative 1. As x approaches negative 1 here, what happens? Well, notice that the numerator is going to go to 0. But the denominator is also going to go to 0. So this is one of those situations like we've seen before in previous limit videos where we have an indeterminate form for a limit. And thus, when that happens, we have to do some kind of other things, right? So one of those other things, of course, is attempting to apply some algebraic methods to the limit. So let's try that. Let's see what we can do. And based on what we have here, perhaps it's best to try to combine the terms in the numerator and maybe nice things will happen. So let's take a look here and do that. All right, what's this the limit the same as? Limit as x goes to negative 1. 4 over x squared and all I'm going to do is get a common denominator with the x squared and write this as a 4x squared over x squared and then of course all of that divided by x plus 1. So that's just of course result of multiplying the 4 by x squared over x squared. Now let's clean, clean this up. This is the limit as x goes to negative 1 of now 4 minus 4x squared all over x squared all over x plus 1. And then by division of fractions, write it down here on the line below, this is the limit as x goes to negative 1 of 4 minus 4x squared over x squared times x plus 1. So did anything help yet? Well, let's take a look. As x goes to negative 1, the numerator still goes to 0. And in fact, the denominator still goes to zero. So we're not quite done yet, right? It still has indeterminate form and there's other algebraic manipulations to do. So then what could we do? Well, looks like the numerator might be factorable, right? Let's try to factor that and see if anything nice happens. All right, so this limit as x goes to negative one. I'm gonna factor out the four because it's a common factor. I'll be left with one minus x squared in the numerator all over x squared times x plus 1. And then, of course, the 1 minus x squared is a difference of two squares. 
So this is the same as the limit as x goes to negative 1 of 4 times 1 minus x times 1 plus a x over x squared times an x plus 1. Keeping in mind, x plus 1 is the same as 1 plus x. Those two factors are gone. And so this is really the same as the limit as x goes to negative 1 of 4 times 1 minus x over x squared. And notice now we do not have indeterminate form as x goes to negative 1. And thus we can go ahead and evaluate this limit, which gives us a 4 times a 1 minus a minus 1 over minus 1 squared. So what is that? That's 4 times 2 on top. That's an 8 over 1, which gives us 8. And thus the slope of the tangent line to this function 4 divided by x squared at the location x is equal to negative 1 is equal to 8. That's the slope there. We did it. Now that we got the slope, we can find the equation of the tangent line to the function at this location x is negative 1. So remember from just a moment ago, f of negative 1 is equal to 4. There's our ordered pair, negative 1 comma 4. And the slope of the tangent line at that location is equal to 8. And so what do we do? Just using point slope formula, y minus its output 4 is equal to the slope 8 times x minus its input value, which is negative 1, otherwise known as y is equal to 8 times an x plus 1. And then if I just add the 4 to both sides, I get a plus of 4. And then combining like terms gives 8x plus a 8 plus a 4 equal to y. In other words, y is equal to 8x plus 12. And there you have it. There's the equation of the tangent line at the location x is negative 1 for this function. f of x is 4 divided by x squared. So, of course, once you find the, the slope of the tangent line, then finding the equation of the line is just the same as finding the equation of any other line. Graphically, just to see it all line up, here is the picture. This is our function, f of x is equal to 4 divided by x squared. And here's our point of interest, right, negative 1 comma 4. The red line there you can see is our tangent line, and we just found that the equation of that line was y is equal to 8x plus 12. 8 being the slope, we can see it's a pretty steep um, line there, right? As we go from left to right, the function is also increasing. Take note of that. So the slope should be positive. And then if you were to continue this graph way up there, right, you can imagine it intersecting at the location 0, comma 12 on the y-axis. And so that's the video. That's our first video on getting into the topic eventually of what we're going to call derivatives. But in order to first talk about that, we got to talk about how to find actual tangent lines using the limit definition. So until the next video, it's Math and Beats, and I'm out. Later.